conference in Canada. Professor uh, Walid will speak about magnetic rods in early onset scoliosis. Mr. Khaled? Early onset scoliosis is a true problem as it happens in kids usually have comorbidities and also might need multiple surgeries and multiple anesthesia. This is Walid Kishta, a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at McMaster University and the fellowship program director of pediatric orthopedics at McMaster University. I'm going to talk to you about the magnetic rods for early onset scoliosis. Early onset scoliosis can be classified as infantile and juvenile. Infantile below the age of three, juvenile between four to ten. Uh, also can be classified as uh, congenital idiopathic syndromic neuromuscular or associated with thoracic insufficiency. Incidence is 4%, uh, infantile more in males, juvenile more in female, and uh, location is usually right thoracic and infantile and left thoracic and juvenile. Congenital scoliosis is a failure of formation or failure of segmentation or both. Usually happens at the fourth to six weeks of gestation and um, it's uh, estimated in one to four percent. Uh, can be caused by maternal exposure to valproic acid alcohol or hyperthermia. Associated conditions can be plagiocephaly or flat head, congenital defects, neural axis abnormalities, uh, it's like syringomyelia, Arnold Carey syndrome, to the cord dysrhythm, or spinal cord tumors. Also, can be associated with cardiac defects, genitourinary defects, spinal cord malformation, Wachter syndrome, Goldenar oculo auricular vertebral syndrome, clavicle file syndrome, and allergy syndrome. And also, uh, we need to uh, investigate for all of these things, in especially the heart, genitourinary by ultrasound, and uh, also for uh, spinal cord malformation using uh, MRI. Can have a, a significant effect on the respiratory function uh, due to intrinsic alveolar hypoplasia, extrinsic disturbance of chest wall function, thoracic insufficiency syndrome, pulmonary function impairment is associated with curve more than 60 degrees, and uh, cardiopulmonary issues associated with curve more than 90. Um, if it's untreated, early onset scoliosis or early spinal fusion result in a short spine is associated with increased mortality and cardiopulmonary compromise. It's good to remember that lung maturity achieved by the age of eight. Don't forget to look at gait, rib rotational deformity, cafe oily spots, patches of hair, dimpling, nevi, foot deformity, and also assess the motor and reflexes. Imaging include standing PA and lateral X-rays. Look for the cob angle congenital vertebrae. Also uh, get MRI in congenital scoliosis, even in absence of neurologic deficit. We start treatment by either bracing or casting um, as a delayed tactics to delay surgery due to uh, as a high risk of complications. Surgery, uh, mainly distraction surgery or chest distraction by vector uh, or spinal osteotomy and short fusion or the growing rods. Um, each one of these has advantage and disadvantages, but overall the main issues is re recurrent surgeries and hence uh, uh, a lot of uh, complications due to multiple anesthesia, multiple surgeries. Um, we'll talk about the vector, uh, which includes um, uh, fixation from uh, rib to spine or spine to, to or uh, rib to rib or rib to spine. And uh, you need to bring the patient every six months for uh, uh, lengthening. Growing rods, same idea, usually spine to spine, brings the patient every six months, uh, opens the incision around the lengthening part uh, for uh, lengthening and also has a lot of complications. Shaler rods uh, is by doing fusion, using long rods at the top and the bottom uh, that will grow with the spine. Locutrolli rods is similar to Shela but 
usually do the fusion at the top and the bottom foundation and let the two rods slide with each other growing with the spine. Complications are very high including infection, skin breakdown, autofusion, failure to prevent progression, thoracic insufficiency syndrome, hardware failure and anchors pull out, proximal junctional kyphosis, negative psychological effects, and flat back and crankshaft phenomena, and metal ion level increase across. Come to the clinic and do uh, lengthening with the magnets. This is the idea of the magnet. We'll show you uh, three cases. This is case number one, is eight year old uh, female who had a Marfan syndrome, uh, presented with a curve of 70 degrees. She's a good candidate for magnetic rods. Uh, insertion of the rods has been done with uh, three levels of foundation at the top, two at the bottom, and we inserted the rods in between. And these rods are um, uh, 90 millimeters for uh, lengthening, uh, for the magnets and uh, we get intraoperative correction of uh, uh, to from 70 to 30 degrees case number two a six year old had early onset scoliosis treated initially by serial casting and there is no progress after that uh, has been treated by magnetic rods we get 50 percent of correction uh, rods has been inserted and this is a correction before we start the uh, magnetic lengthening Case number three started by uh, severe kyphoscolosis of a curve of 120 degrees. Uh, we started treatment by halo traction for a few months, followed by insertion of magnetic rods. We get over 50% of correction. And um, this is even before uh, started um, uh, uh, the lengthening with the magnets. Uh, this kid is syndromic. That's why we uh, augmented this with a brace. Uh, to avoid any uh, abnormal movements. Um, we had uh, our systematic review published in GBGS this year uh, about the comparison of magnetic controlled growing rods with other distraction-based surgical technologies uh, for early onset scoliosis. What we found is surgical outcomes, no difference, complications lower with the magnetic rods, quality of life is better, and um, uh, cost is very cost effective. The only um, difference uh, negative is uh, titanium level is usually higher with the magnetic rods. Thank you. That was Walid Krishta, uh, Assistant uh, Professor of uh, Pediatric Orthopedic Surgery at McMaster University. tonight thank you so much sir now we will move to the uh, next speaker my brother and my dear friend dr islam abshafi from banha university will speak about the proximal pool scaphoid fracture with avn dr islam Uh, is it okay now? Yes, it's okay. Okay. First, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to Professor Dr. Gamal Hosni and Professor Dr. Mohammed Ashab for their great effort to introduce this great event, really. Uh, welcome to all attendees to their home, Banha Hospital Department. Uh, our case is uh, about the case of proximal pulse avoid fracture in union with a vascular necrosis of the wall of the bone. What to do? Our patient is a male patient, 30 years old, presented to us with pain of right wrist after old neglect trauma one year ago, with limited activity and weak hand again. X-rays show a non-united proximal fracture scaphoid, non treated MRI and CT was done, show 
uh, uh, hyper dense area, low density at T1 and T2 uh, with images. Uh, CT scan show no radiocarbon arthritis. So the problems we face, non-united fracture scaphoid, a vascular cross of all proximal pool, sturbed scaphoid mechanics. A lot of methods used before for treatment of such cases as revascularized boom grafting from distal radius, excision of proximal pool, synthetic replacement such as silicon, titanium, acrylics, or titanium. Usually 60% of cases need later four or three coronal fusion or proximal row carbon. Our plan to replace the proximal pool by a autograph with the same shape of the proximal pool scaphoid has articular cartridge coverage and restore the scaffold rate ligament and breast mechanics. Uh, we plan to use a base of hamate at, uh, to restore the proximal pool as it has the same shape uh, nearly, also has articular cartridge coverage of all of it and have a ligament in its, its uh, volar part between the capitate and the hamate. Uh, we use the dorsal approach of the rest uh, and the capsule is opened via uh, nerve sparing approach and reflected proximally to expose the hamate, cavitate, and the scaphoid and the fracture site. The excision of the proximal bowl of the scaphoid is done, but prior to it, we should elevate the scaphoid ligament from the scaphoid pool to allow the attached it again to the proximal part of the hamate, which will be uh, used. This is the proximal part of the scaphoid after excision, show unhealthy bone with unhealthy cartilage. Then we use uh, an osteotome and uh, take the same length of the proximal bone from the hamate. At this stage, we should take care to not injure the uh, volar ligament of the capito hamate and try to keep it attached to the hamate pool. This is a graft after, after taken, shows a ligament of the volar part of the hamate. And then we use this graft and uh, reflect it to, keep, to become volar to dorsal, and this ligament become dorsal to us. Uh, this photos of the proximal pool after excision and the, uh, take uh, the graft. We usually take one millimeter more in the graft than the size of the bowl to allow us to reshape the, uh, the shape of the graft uh, according to the situation. Then fixation of the graft used uh, Herbert screws via dorsal or volar approaches according to surgeon preference. This photo shows the fracture sites completely closed and compressed. Then after this, we uh, reduce the lunate, open the cavitate, and fix by K-wire. Temporary, we leave this K-wire about uh, three to four weeks post-operative to allow soft tissue healing, then be removed, and fixation of the Herbert screw. Then repair of the scaffold lunate ligament is done. Uh, if we take uh, the graft with the ligament, it's, it's ligament intact, and we can uh, keep the scaffold unit ligament intact, we do direct repair at this stage. If we, uh, when taking the graft injury of the ligament, we use a such uh, suture on anchor, about two millimeters to augment the repair. And vice versa, if we didn't uh, take the scaffold unit ligament well, we use an anchor suture to the unit to augment the repair of scaffold unit ligament. This is interoperative photos of um, uh, two cases. Then uh, we repair the scaffold element. This is a suture anchor, about uh, two millimeters in size, and the repair of the scaffold unit ligament done prior to closure of the capsule and the soft tissue. Uh, this x ray of the same patient, about 11 weeks post operative, show good union uh, achieved from AP and lateral views. And we achieve a good union about four months post operative complete union of the scaphoid with no scaffold unit dissociation and no collapse at the hamate site as we didn't uh, detach uh, the distal articulation between capitate and hamate or capitate, uh, the, uh, hamate and tripoid. Uh, this is AP and lateral views and the patient have a good range of motion 
had returned to his activities uh, prior to operation. He was a manual worker, uh, usually elevating the power of 15 to 20 kilograms and use a hammer and was satisfied. Uh, take home message, base of Hamid is a good donor for scaphoid proximal bore replacement in case of complete avascular necrosis of the proximal bore. But if there is an incomplete uh, avascular necrosis of the proximal bore of scaphoid, really advise to try to fix with revascularization procedure first. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Islam Abchafi, for this very interesting talk. Now we will come to the uh, final talk. Uh, presented by Professor Mohammed Farouk Zaki Nasser Institute. Professor Mohammed will speak about the resection of intramuscular soft tissue tumor of the fine food. Professor Mohammed. Uh, good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The section of intramuscular soft tissue tumor of the thigh and In the beginning of our presentation today, we discussed the dissection, the secret of the section of the basic oncology is the blunt dissection, which is done mainly by the index. It is called the golden rule. Our patient today, uh, female patient, 27 years old, who is complaining of pain and slump in the right side since eight years, and another swelling on the dorsum of the left foot. The last three months, the masses start to be painful and increasing in size, and the patient seeking the medical advice. Here we start to do investigations. We do the high region to MRI. Uh, we found that in mass, homogeneous mass, found in the post remedial portion of the thigh, huge mass, in relation to the detailed vessels, in relation to the sciatic nerve location, and the homogeneous mass inside the, like inside the muscles. Here, another uh, cut, and uh, demonstrating its relation to the femur, to the femur, to the posterior surface of the femur, to the linea aspera, and the width of the foot. Another lesion was foot lesion, left foot. We found soft tissue mass. It is found in the dorsal of the foot, subcutaneous, superficial to the tendons of the dorsal flexors of the tendon. Okay. We proceed for CT guided biopsy. As the region itself, the thigh region itself was diagnosed by pathologists, intramuscular lipoma. While the lesion in the foot, giant cell tumor of the tendon here, as the patient has double pathology, double lesions. We proceed for surgical excision of the lesions. We're starting with the side lesion uh, with a huge mass in the post medial portion of the, of, the, of the right side. We do medial approach and we go with the section of subcutaneous fat, reaching the sartorius muscle. Near the sartorius muscle, we elevate the sartorius muscle. We found the medial intramuscular septum. We, we go through the medial intramuscular septum to find the region. And starting soft and starting blunt dissection, carried by, by our hand to separate the mass itself from the surrounding adhesions all around and to, to try to separate the sciatic nerve and the, the peter vessels from the surface of the mass by our hand and by the right angle and do plant dissection all through, even ventral to the mass, dorsal to the mass, and to lateral to the mass, to separate the mass all, all around completely. Then start to deliver it out. We decide, we, we confer its approximate end and its distal end. It's a distal end. This is the mass was uh, found in the in the semen in the nodus muscles. So it's a distal end was in the tibial plateau. And the proximal end is the, the rest of the muscles. We start to cut it from the proximal and start to deliver it out from the from the from the surgical site. Here 
the mass is approximately outside approximately outside the, the tumor bed. Here is the sciatic nerve and here is the vessel. We start to deliver it to reach its distal attachment to the tibia plateau. And reaching its distal attachment and cut it out. It is done. Three surgical margin results. It is a huge mass. It's uh, measure, measurements 21 centimeters in width and about 34 centimeters in length and 8 centimeters in thickness. And it was approved, by, approved as intramuscular lipoma. Here, the tumor bed side, and this here, the septic nerve, is free all through, and the vessels are free all through. And all the feeding vessels are separated from the nest. The foot lesion. The foot lesion, it is a soft tissue mass over the tendons of the over the tendons of the dorsal flexors of the foot. In the dorsal flexors of the foot. Here we do through the direct dorsal approach on the mass itself. And then Start to buy plant section by following the same principle. But here we cannot use our hands. We use the scissors, we do plant sections only. One section. We get all around the region to circumscribe the region itself and start to peel it from the surface of the tendon and remove it from the tendon from the tendon surface. Here we start to separate it from the mass from the tendons. Here, the tendons and the distal the extensive uh, tenacula. Okay. Here, the mass is out. Here, the vein. The mass is out, and this is the finger. It is done. Three surgical margins and the tendons are intact. Even the dorsal veins are separated without any injury to the testicular arm. Thank you. Done. Sir Mohammed Farouk, for this very interesting piece. Uh, do we have any questions from our dear panelists to our eminent speakers? Any questions? So now we come to the end of uh, the longest uh, and maybe the longest uh, clinical meeting in uh, the history of orthopedic surgery. Uh, may I say some few words? Uh, many thanks to God for giving me the power to begin and complete and finish this very long international webinar. Alhamdulillah, 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 Allahumma laka alhamdulillah, ya rabbal alameen. Many thanks to our eminent speakers from all over the world. We have tonight, today and tonight, 57 speakers from about 30 countries and 99 panelists. Many thanks to them and many thanks to all of you and all our dear attendees. See you, inshallah, in future meetings. اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر Thank you so much وتصبحوا على ألف خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شكرا لكم